will summon his prophets. Amen. They're not going to pray for you, because they're already doing prayer. They're going to prophesy and give the mind of God to you. That's oh, right. Jesus. 212-316-2177. You know, you know, two, two, seven, seven. Uh. Yes, prophet. And you know, Master Prophet, they're home saying, I want to know. And the only way to know and your secret to be told mm -hmm. is to get to the lifeline and let your seed intercede for you. Because oh. the only voice that God mm -hmm. hears is a seed. That's right. Oh. Amen. The only thing God can hear is your seed because your seed is your life. Mm -hmm. Speaking of. <laughs> your <laughs> offering is your life. That's why I asked this woman, when was the last time you tied? Hmm. Sound like she said June. God told me, said her tithing is off. And the Bible says when you don't do your tithe, you are cursed with a curse. curse. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what that means. We've been praying for people to get blessed, and God says the blessing has been stopped. Why? We've prophesied the word of the Lord with them. He says, yes, but they have not kept the covenant. Let me tell you about a man that got a powerful prophecy from God. Mm -hmm. And because he violated the prophecy, not only was this prophecy almost aborted, but God sought to kill him. That's right. This man name was Moses. Moses has gotten a word. Thus saith the Lord, I shall raise you up to go unto Pharaoh and let my people go. And so Moses went running and running and got his family together, Zipporah, got his two sons together. And while they were sleeping in the inn, they were at the holiday inn. Mm. Yeah. Sheridan Inn, Western Inn, one of those inns. They were sleeping in the inn. The Bible says that God, God sought God. to kill Moses. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't get disturbed. Some people say, you gave a prophecy to them that they were going to do great things and they died, Master Prophet. You must have missed it. No, I didn't miss it. The prophecy was right. They missed their responsibility in keeping the covenant to make sure the prophecy came out all right. Mm -hmm. Take your time, Master Prophet. That's good. And while her husband was being strangled mm -hmm. by God, come on. Zipporah says, I don't know what's going on around here, but I heard some old folklore that God made a covenant with Abraham, and we got two sons, and we forgot. To yeah, circumcise yeah. these boys. She went and found a rock and started doing surgery in the room. Mm -hmm. So while God was choking out her husband, she was cutting off the skin the from skin. off <laughs> of the penis of the boys. Now, mm -hmm. what does that represent esoterically? Mm -hmm. God wants no flesh mingled with the coming out of a seed. God wants no flesh. He does not want the seed to be hindered by the flesh. That when the seed has got to come out, he doesn't want flesh slowing it up. And they were to circumcise their sons on which day? On what day were they supposed to circumcise their son? Uh, on which day? Saturday. Someone, someone's going to tell me in the chat room. On what day was the circumcision supposed to take place? Oh, I know. I wish I have a Bible student here. Saturday. Come on, Myra Moore went to church. She was in Sunday school. On what day? What did Myra Moore say in the chat room? The, the eighth day. It was on the eighth day the circumcision was supposed to take place after birth. And eight is the number of what? New beginnings. New beginnings. It is also the number of resurrection. Because God never wanted the male genitals to be dead. He wanted it resurrected. And so when you cut it, I want you to cut it 
on the eighth day because even when you cut it, it's going to resurrect and still live and produce seed. Mm. Oh my gosh. Mm. Now, listen. Mm. Mm. Now, let me just say this. There are some of you listening to me out there right now that you got too much flesh around your seed. Mm. You got too many conditions around your seed. Mm -hmm. You have too many excuses around your seed. Oh, don't make, make me preach in mm. here today. Mm. Preach on. Oh, yeah. You got preach too much on, stuff yes. around your seed and it's hindering your seed. You need a financial circumcision. And so God is challenging you because you came into the presence of the prophets today because there's breakthrough around your name. And you need to get ready and do what? Sow so your seed. seed. Sow your seed. seed. Thank you. Sow your seed. A master prophet, we are asking today for everyone to do that 100 Dollar, I believe the prophet seed. But Master Prophet, you know that you're an over-deliverer. And you will give them not one, not two, but three prophets today when they call in and sow that seed of $300 or more. And today, you're doing something special, Master Prophet. And I must find it here. Okay. There you are. <laughs> the MP3 <laughs> player, when they sow that $388 today, Master Prophet. Not only are they going to get those three prophets, but they are going to get the MP3 player as well. Master Prophet. My goodness. Now listen, this is awesome. And there's, and there's some people out there, you want to give, but you got too much flesh around your seed. That flesh will have you in fear. Yes. Oh, yeah. Flesh will paralyze yeah. you. Yeah. It's true. 212-316-2177. Okay, read on, Prophetess Angel. You are pregnant with something great. The prophet finds his way into your life during a season of crisis and helps interpret and translate the mind of God for your situation. Rebecca never forgot the prophecy that she received from God. Listen, from never forget your prophecy. That's why we put on MP3 file. Mm -hmm. Never forget your prophecy. Read on. From the moment she heard the prophetic word, she was always giving birth to her prophecy. The prophetic word is like your lifeline. It is mm. imperative that you do not break your prophetic connection because your prophecy angel has divine words of instruction and revelation that will change your mind about what you see in the natural and place your focus on spirit. My goodness. You know, this is amazing. I, I know Prophet Leslie is rejoicing because, you know, her phone went out for a moment and then she came back in because mm. she must have walked, ran through a dead zone or something. She had to handle something. She's coming back in because God is bringing about a prophetic revelation. That's right. Right now. There's a prophetic revelation. And um, I don't want anyone to leave. If, you, if, if, if your phone ring, ignore it now. Because what I'm about to break open right now is going to be a revelation from God. You need to know why this nation is in financial turmoil. No famine ever shows up unless God calls the famine. Mm -hmm. But when God creates the famine, because see, God always funds both sides of the war. He turned around and told Moses to go down. He told Moses to go down to... Um, Egypt, Egypt. and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And then God turns around and hardened Pharaoh's heart. Yes, he did. <laughs> this is very real. Okay. Um, this is intense. Continue reading. Breaking your prophetic connection is like losing your sight. Listen. Breaking your prophetic connection is like losing your sight. I want everybody to write that down. Breaking your prophetic connection 
is like losing. 